I'll be speaking with Bishop John Selders, who's a pastor at Amistad UCC, a leader in Moral Monday, Connecticut, and he's just back from Boston. How was the trip? It was a good trip. Um, it was also, um, in some ways, you know, we're responding to the call that went out. So it was a bit, you know, it's a bit jarring that, that here we are in 2017 having to do the very same things we've done, um, you know, in times past. In fact, I saw uh, a, a one sign that was never more exemplary of that um, uh, than the sign that says, I'm sorry, didn't we do this already in the 60s? <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. So, so in in some ways, it felt like that. It felt like you know, here we are again. Uh, so, so uh, Charlottesville, um, you you weren't there in in that uh, anti-fascist march, is that right? That is correct. We we in fact were invited and um, had some you know uh, thought that maybe we should go. Um, we were called away um, with responding to some family um, issues in in Chicago and St. Louis, so we were not there. But I can tell you my heart was there, and as we began to see uh, what many of you saw, uh, many of your listeners saw, and you saw, Brother Stan, um, we were alarmed and disturbed at the, um, the presentation and the uh, expression of violence and hatred, hatred, and in fact, uh, we're on the phone with some of our um, fellow freedom fighters and and some of our um, like family members who were there on the front lines, um, the Reverend Osaji Fuseku is our dear brother, uh, and um, the Reverend Doctor Cornell West, and and of course they had prominent roles um, in the faith leading the faith uh, leaders group um, that were right in the middle of what I call some of the scrum and scrumming that was going on. Um, what our dear sister, um, the Reverend Dr. Tracy Blackman, was also, in fact, um, involved in that. We, we've known each, her for a very long time. She's a fellow St. Louisan, mm-hmm. in fact, and so um, um, saw a disturbing uh, event where she was literally you know, um, taken away, out of harm's way, as she was doing a report, uh, a live you know, um, television uh, interview on MSNBC. So yes, it was quite. It was quite. Um, um, as who, who, who took her away? Uh, some of the Antifa, or, or just not other... sure. She had. She had some security. I don't. I don't know. Uh-huh. She was. She was. Um, security was deployed to for her. Um, and I don't know who who that security was uh, specifically. Uh, certainly, with Reverend Seku and um, Dr. West. Uh, in fact, Reverend Seku's words were to me directly, Antifa, uh, saved my life three times today, brother. Wow. Yeah. And and Cornell West is quoted as saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, awful down there. I mean, uh, besides the one woman who was murdered, I guess two people injured badly. One fellow was. Uh, beaten and got a stroke the next day, which the doctors yeah, say was yeah. the result of that. And then uh, um, the man who was beaten next to the police station, I understand, he was in some kind That's of parking right. garage. That's um, right. That's right. And, uh, you know, they, they, they arrested the uh, woman who helped tear down that statue in Durham, but they haven't arrested the people who beat this man next to the police station <laughs> and almost killed right. him. So, uh, well... We've seen that before, yeah. We yeah. have, we have. And so, it, 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 you know, in light of what happened in Charlottesville, when the call went out um, for um, folk to come to Boston, um, we didn't hesitate. In fact, we um, were just back from our travels out in the Midwest uh, on Friday night, late Friday night. But we got in the car Saturday morning and headed to Boston and was on the ground. We had good traffic, good travel, and was on the ground um, and... Um, you will, if you check out Washington Post, as a, certainly a, a nice prominent picture of yours truly. Oh, uh, really? I didn't uh, see that. Okay, I'll yeah, look for it. Yeah, in the gallery, um, pictures of the the event, as well as um, a CNN took an, I took an interview with CNN, um, and uh, certainly we had some local interviews 
as well uh, here. That was a great coverage by WFSB. I mean, now it I seems almost inevitable, you know, a huge crowd of people hating these Nazis. But there was a rally of Nazis in Boston, uh, I think about a month ago, and it was about 300 of them. And the counter protesters were not at all prepared, and you know, just a few dozen, and and they were kind of helpless in, in, in the face of this nastiness. But uh, sure, cer- but certainly very they, different, very different yesterday. That's right. That's right. And 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 I'll say this too, um, brother Stan, that that you know, in many instances, um, folk have just not been paying attention. You. And and other leaders and some of us uh, who are on the ground who are paying attention to um, um, some of these hate groups um, would have a sense of it. But I I would say that you know, quite frankly, rank and file, you know, John and Jane Q, um, pretty pretty removed. And what has happened in light of Charlottesville is that now this is if this is a part of the national discourse and dialogue. And I would say this this is certainly. Uh, in a, in a similar fashion, what happened in Ferguson brought the Black Lives Matter movement to the the national spotlight, and mm-hmm. it, it appears only when there is some national spotlight, when there is some attention paid uh, to the hate, to the brutality, then 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 we might then get uh, get a chance to uh, bear witness in in larger crowds and people being. Uh, activated. So I mean, the momentum's going our way, at least for the moment. Uh, I mean, they they thought there was going to be a rally of 6,000 Nazis in Charlottesville, and that was defeated. And of course, what happened in Boston was, uh, you know, pathetic. They had a hundred of, somebody called it alt-right light. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And thirty, forty thousand uh, of the good guys. Uh, so, what was it like uh, marching? There was such a. Um, now, I, I can say to you and to the listeners here that we didn't see any violence at all. We didn't experience any of that. Um, we were embedded uh, in the crowd. Um, we were asked by the organizers uh, as faith leaders. There were there were several hundred of us who were were faith leaders and we did there were uh, we were gathered at at a point and um um did some praying and singing in preparation of of the day and we were asked to embed ourselves in the crowd and not to be pulled out um uh as in some uh um, rallies and some marches we were we were embedded in the crowd and so I was very much a part of um you know, probably, you know, several dozen, 50 to 100 folk who were kind of, we marched together um, um, the several miles down from uh, where we gathered in Roxbury down to um, um, the Boston Commons, downtown Boston. And there was just a sense of love and respect and regard. Um, There was sharing of snacks and and niblets and such. Um, Mm -hmm. People were, were, were looking out for each other. Water, it was very hot. Uh, and um, can I just say, I put in about 10 miles of walking yesterday. Uh, mm. yesterday. Wow. <laughs> uh, oh, that's good for so you, my body, My body as a middle-aged man is feeling it today. Um, <laughs> um, but it was, a good, it was a good gathering. There was lots of my remarks to the, the crowd. I was asked to provide some leadership with, uh, as uh, the clergy gathered and the faith leaders gathered. And what I said to them, it, it's all about the love. And at this point, you know, the major ask for faith leaders was, in fact, to be um, to be a loving uh, spirit presence. Who was the so, organ? Who were the organizers of this? Well, there was a, there was a there was a uh, a small a team pulled together um, uh, that that were made up of local kind of left organizers along with Black Lives Matter had a had a um, very very strong hand and presence in the leadership um, and there were several other groups uh, and I'm sorry because I'm, I'm I'm a little bit unfamiliar with um, the, the the Boston you know group of organizers um, some of the folk I did know um, um, by name um, but but Black Lives Matter and a, and a few faith leaders uh, um, I understand were both bo- both and I'm sorry. There's one other. There was a group um, that Black Lives Matter National uh, asked for help with 
Uh, and so a group out of Baltimore actually came and provided um, medic training and um, marshalling training as well. So it, it was a collective, both local and regional and national group of organizers who were um, um, charged with, you know, uh, within a week's time to pull together 40, 50,000 to mobilize against. Yeah, those amazing. Uh, yeah, what so uh, thoughts about... Great job. Thoughts about moving forward? Uh, we at Promoting Enduring Peace are, are going to have an event. I'll put in a announcement here. We're, we're, uh, we've rented the best video in Hamden, and we're having a uh, video showing called uh, Video Against Fascism, small videos in Greece and Syria and, of course, USA and this and that. So that's one thing we're trying. Uh, how about Moral Mondays? Uh, is it too soon to talk about what might be the next step? Oh, no, it's not too soon. You know, we're always active. <laughs> <laughs> we're always um, got something on the horizon. I, I can tell you um, we will um, be leading a conversation uh, on next Monday, in fact, the 28th. Oh, uh, competition. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, on the 20th, so. the evening of the 28th, Real Art Ways will be showing Who's Streets, which is the documentary film um, uh, premiering here in Hartford um, uh, of the struggle in Ferguson. And that, ah. that's home for us. Um, and we were certainly in the middle of all that happened in Ferguson in, in response to Michael Brown's um, um, uh, death and, and the aftermath. Um, um, we're partnering with Real Art Ways to provide some commentary. And, um, oh, that sounds great. That. What time is that? that that's going to begin at 7 o'clock uh, on Monday the 28th at Real Art Ways in, here in Hartford. Um, and that's, that's what's on tap. Uh, certainly we'll be participating in um, uh, another rally and event um, uh, coming up um, with with the fight for 15, they are they are activated and mobilizing. So the weekend and Labor Day, be looking out for. Um, um, they're they're organizing. Um, there may be uh, something on the ninth. I heard this, well, wacko woman uh, from Act for America, who claims to have yeah. 750,000 yeah. members, and um, she was talking on some. You know, on a big radio station about going to have rallies, you know, against Muslims, basically, you know, talking such garbage. You know, there's places in America that are no-go places where if you're not a Muslim, you can't go and all this absolute nonsense. But, well, the last time I saw you, I think, was in Waterbury at a uh, counter-protest for a uh, an Act for America rally. Is that right? That's right. That's right. We We, we were... Um, we didn't participate in that one, but we we were involved in uh, in a Ramadan event prior to just prior to that, and then we had a Black Lives Matter rally in Waterbury. I think. Oh, that's, that's where I saw you. Okay, I'm getting uh, I'm confused. So, okay. That's right. But there are events, and I can tell you, on the horizon for us, we will be um, uh, certainly uh, having a leading role in participating with um, uh, folk. Uh, across the state in organizing and responding to the national a national call for uh, racial justice, a march for racial justice. So um, be, be paying attention to that. And then this fall, uh, Moral Monday will be uh, a leading uh, organizing effort uh, around what we're calling a faith justice conference, uh, mm -hmm. an opportunity to do some skills building, to do some get inspired and and to do some what I'm going to call dream casting or or, or setting some agendas, uh, uh, and as we as we try to map out what, what's the role of the faith community and those of us who would claim some moral position, and, and that's going to be happening this fall, and 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 we're certainly looking forward to being a, a leading activist and partnering with the national call around the new poor people's campaign. So, so, so we're not sitting around okay. waiting for stuff to happen. And yeah, certainly, yeah. we'll be responding to uh, to things as they come. But uh, we we have a pretty bold and aggressive agenda uh, set forth for where Moral Monday is going to find itself. Well, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much, Stan. We always enjoy speaking to you and and partnering with you in your work.